Arabian Oud's Ihsas versus Ihsas Khas. I got them mixed up. This one's Khas. Let's talk about it. Here's some codes to save you some cash on your next Middle Eastern niche or designer fragrances. What's going on, guys? My name is Neeb. Welcome back to Aromatics. We're going to be talking about these two Arabian Oud fragrances, and they're basically, this one is a flanker of the original. So we have Ihsas and Ihsas Khas. Khas means specific, so or limit exclusive. So this is Ihsas exclusive, essentially. Uh, the way that this one looks online looks a little bit more transparent, but this is in fact Ihsas Khas. So both of these have a quite inspired or similar presentation, whereas the Khas is a much higher end looking bottle, and Ihsas, the original, is a bit cheaper looking. It doesn't necessarily look cheap, but you can definitely tell it's not the same quality. A heavy ceramic looking bottle, the cap itself is pretty plastic, and it just slides onto place. It doesn't snap on a place, so do not pick it up by the cap. Ihsas Khas, however, is glass. The cap itself is a pretty hard plastic as well, and this one is snug on a place, pretty damn snug. So definitely higher end bottle and cap with Arabian Oud on the top as well. So both of these fragrances have very similar notes, but they do things uh, similar yet different at the same time. Notes with the original include bergamot green apple at the top, or green apple blossom I should say, with heart notes of rose, lily of the valley, jasmine, and base notes of cedarwood, amber, and vanilla. So this basically smells in a nutshell, like a little bit more of a higher end version of, look at that atomizer though, that is pretty cool. This one smells like the EDT version. Vanillic, apple, some cinnamon, mass appeal, except it's done in a much more refined way. Boss bottle compared to this smells a little bit cheaper. Actually, it does smell cheaper. So like I said, simple as that. Apple, cinnamon, festive vibes. This is perfect for the fall and springtime. Smells like boss bottled intense. It, re it really does. And while I don't think this is a distinct distinctive clone of it, I do want to spray it on see how close it gets to something like Ehsas. So Ehsas on this strip and Boss. Yeah man, I would say this is about 75%. So it's not distinctively Boss bottled, but it is pretty close. So the main difference between Boss bottled Intense or the Parfum versus this one is that it seems like it's a little bit more full bodied and there's something a bit more aromatic in this than there is in Ehsas. But it's not any surprise because it's closer to the Boss bottled, the original, the Eau de Toilette. In comparison to Boss bottled, the Eau the toilette this does smell a little bit better and higher quality than that one so this one's might be a little bit hard to justify picking up just because of that fact still a good smelling fragrance but with boss bottled being cheap it's not really something that i'm gonna be like yeah you have to have this one there is a difference between this one however and ehsas khas ehsas khas adds a couple of more notes so at the top we've got the bergamot some cinnamon at the top and then in the heart notes we've got geranium green apple and in the base there's madagascar vanilla woody notes and musk. So there is a different and full-bodied uh, nature to this fragrance, much more close to something of the discontinued Boss Bottled Intense Eau de Parfum. And that's basically the difference between Ehsas and Ehsas Khas. Similar to the difference of Boss Bottled Intense to Boss Bottled the original. Much more full-bodied, a lot richer, there's definitely going to be more aromatic nuances coming distinctively from the geranium, so rosy undertones or a rosy nature with some aromatic undertones. And we've got that cinnamon and the uh, signature vanilla apple combination. Ehsas Khas is surprisingly close. This is about 85%. It does have its own differences as well, but it's like, it's, it's pretty close at the very least in the same family. This does last about eight hours though, and I got a compliment from my barber when wearing this one specifically. So let me do a little final side-by-side -side comparison how close these actually get, and let's see. So without much surprise, the Arabian Oud fragrance is stronger, a little bit stronger than the original one, but they are surprisingly close. It's about 85%, you guys, seriously close. I kind of want to say a little bit more, but it does have a bit more spices, and that's what makes this one scream a little bit better than Boss Bottled Intense Eau de Parfum. This is now discontinued. It's not gonna be anything that's wow or groundbreaking by any means, but it's an easy fragrance that you can gift. It's a good uh, entry level niche Middle Eastern or Middle Eastern niche fragrance you can get into technically because this is a niche brand. However, it is distinctively close to Boss Bottled EDP or the Intense EDP, and that's a designer DNA. So the DNA, nothing outstanding, but the execution, it does it in the better way, arguably better than the way that the original did it. Still pretty close, that's my opinion. As far as the original goes, this didn't last more than about six to seven hours. It's relatively light, kind of like the boss, in t or the boss original DNA, so there you have it. Really, it's up to you how much you like that whole boss bottle DNA. For me personally, my pick would be Ehsas Khas, and like I said, it's a good entry into the house 
House of Arabian Oud. Doesn't have any Oud or funk, contrary to the stereotype of the entire name of the house, like Arabian Oud. It has nothing to do with Oud. And actually a pretty mass appealing, compliment worthy fall and springtime fragrance. Let me know down in the comments what you think, and if you would even be interested in grabbing something like this. Although it is similar to this designer fragrance, it does it in a better way. Make sure to leave a like, hit that subscribe button, and until the next video, peace.